Good morning, child of God. Time for us to crack open God's holy word. Do some scripture re- reading and reflection. We do it every day here on Seize the Day. Also do it on my YouTube channel and uh, share that to my Facebook page. And my 60-second re- <clears throat> excuse me, reflection today at GusLloyd.com is entitled, Your Mansion has to do with our gospel reading. For our first reading, we're back in Acts of the Apostles, picking up where we left off yesterday from Acts chapter 13, starting today at verse 26. When Paul came to Antioch in Pisidia, he said in the synagogue, My brothers, children of the family of Abraham and those others among you who are God-fearing, to us this word of salvation has been sent. The inhabitants of Jerusalem and their leaders failed to recognize him, and by condemning him they fulfilled the oracles of the prophets that are read Sabbath after Sabbath. For even though they found no grounds for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him put to death. And when they had accomplished all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and placed him in a tomb." But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he appeared to those who had come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. These are now his witnesses before the people. We ourselves are proclaiming this good news to you, that what God promised our fathers, he has brought to fulfillment for us, their children, by raising up Jesus. As it is written in the second psalm, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. The word of the Lord from Acts chapter 13, it's our first reading in today's Mass. So today we hear the continuation of the history lesson that we heard St. Paul beginning yesterday at the synagogue in Antioch. You know, it just kind of reminds me as we hear about Paul giving this history lesson to the Jews now, remember these were Jews in the synagogue there in Antioch, about the importance of history and how that old axiom is so true, those who fail to learn history are destined to repeat it. Amen? Okay, today's responsorial, taken from Psalm 2, we heard St. Paul quote this in his speech there at the synagogue in Antioch, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for an inheritance at the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule them with an iron rod. You shall shatter them like an earthen dish. And now, O kings, give heed. Take warning, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice before him with trembling. Rejoice. And the response again, you are my son. This day I have begotten you. From Psalm 2, the responsorial for today's Mass. Now, our gospel reading, we're back in John chapter 14, and this week we've been going through parts of Jesus' long soliloquy at the Last Supper after the washing of the feet from John's gospel. So today, John 14, verses 1 through 6, where Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord from John chapter 14, our Gospel reading in today's Mass. Well, my reflection today at GusLloyd.com is entitled, Your Mansion. And it has to do with this saying of Jesus where he says, where I am going, there are many dwelling places. Well, you know, in the past, this has been referred to as many mansions. And it brings up what's often referred to as the bigger mansion theory. Are you familiar with this? Here's kind of how it goes. And again, this sort of dovetails in with uh, the Protestant belief of once saved, always saved. So the more good works, the more good things you do serving the Lord here on earth, the bigger your mansion will be in heaven. Now, that's kind of an imperfect way of thinking about things. You know, it kind of goes to our our carnal beliefs here about, oh, we all want the nice big mansion on the hill and a bigger mansion. So I like to think of it like this, and a, and a wise priest explained it to me like this once. Those who more greatly perfected their capacity to love on earth will have a greater capacity of perfected love in heaven. Does that make sense? In other words, you'll get a bigger mansion, which is what we should all be working for, right? Amen. Let's start our day with a prayer, shall we? Father, we come before you this morning in a spirit of love and thanksgiving for your word in our heart. Lord, we pray that today and every day we will be building up treasure in heaven, working on that heavenly mansion that we await in glory with you. 
that we receive through faith in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose mighty name we pray, amen and amen, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. So honored to have you here. Have a great weekend, and if God is so willing, we'll try this again next week. Until then, peace and good to you and yours. Bye-bye for now.